Hi everyone, Veronica here, and I'd like to welcome you back to my Digital Scrapbooking for Beginners series. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a scrapbook page in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to show you how to design a scrapbook page with good composition using the rule of thirds. I remember trying to design my first digital scrapbook page. I was overwhelmed with the sheer vastness of the page. There was just so much space and I had no idea how to begin filling it. So if you struggle with this, then this digital scrapbooking tutorial will definitely help. So what is the rule of thirds? Well, it's a system or guide used in photography to help photographers develop good composition but I'm going to show you how to use it to fill a scrapbook page and create pleasing layouts with great composition. I've got some great digital scrapbooking ideas for you and we're going to learn several things, so let's dive in. Okay, let's take a look at a layout that I created using my Just a Pose collection and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So normally when we place a photo on a page, the first thing we want to do is throw it smack dead in the center. Well, the rule of third encourages us not to do that. Now here is how you will get a rule of third guides in Photoshop Elements. You'll come up here to view and then guides. And if I turn my guides on, you can see that I already have my guides employed. And let's take a look at what's going on here in this image. Okay, so what is going on here is the rule of thirds divides your object into three sections. And it encourages us to place things within those sections and most especially putting key points along the intersecting lines. So if you'll look here, you'll see that I have her eye. Now eyes are a natural focal point, so they go great right along these intersecting lines of your rule of thirds. So I have her eye placed right here at this intersection, her smile placed at this intersection, some word art at this intersection, and the highest point of the balloon at the last intersection and then I have them basically in this center frame of the rule of thirds. So how do you get these guides? You go up here to view and then you come down to new guide and then you have an option to place a horizontal or a vertical guide. You can also place your guides in inches, which is indicated here, I-N, that stands for inch. Or you can place it in percentages. And I like to do this in percentages because it's going to be precise. You could also do it in inches, but then you'd have to measure it out and make sure you get it correct. So to place your first guide, you're going to place it one-third. So one-third of 100% would be 33%. And we're going to do the vertical guides first. So I'll say OK. Then we'll come in here and place another new guide. And this time we're going to do it at two-thirds, which would be 66.67%. Why do I keep doing that? 66.67%. And then say OK. And then we're going to come in and do the exact same thing, only this time we will do it horizontally. So we're going to place horizontal at 33% and say OK and then one more horizontal guide at 66.67%. And then say OK. And that is how you create your rule of guides. Now, what I'm going to do is include a rule of guides for you to download, and I will have a link to that in the description below so that you don't have to do that every time. But it's really pretty simple to do. And to remove your guides, all you would do is using your move tool, you would just click on it and drag it until it's no longer on the document. And if I want to have my guide back, I just come over here to my history panel and click up to the last action before it, and then my guide is back. So that is how you would add the rule of guides. Now that you know what the rule of guides is, Let's get started. 
And here is the layout that we are going to be creating. This is absolutely gorgeous. I just love this little girl. She's so adorably cute. So in this layout, what we're going to be doing is learning several things. First and foremost, how to place our elements on the page using the rule of thirds. And then we are going to do some selective recoloring using photo masks. We're also going to learn how to blend an image into the background. That is a super fantastic way to fill up some blank space on a page. And it doesn't take much time at all. We're also going to learn how to use digital scrapbook clusters to create beautiful, charming embellishment groupings. Actually, we're not going to be creating the groupings because they're already created for us, but it is a super handy way to do some scrapbooking in a matter of seconds. And it'll look like you spent all day. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. And then if I grab my space bar, I can just move this around as much as I want to. And then when you let go, you lose your little hand and you're back to the move tool. Okay, so let me tell you what's going on in the page. I will turn on my rule of thirds by going to view guides and you can see I already have those placed. So what I have done is I positioned this picture and this accent paper, the center of this is going right on that rule of thirds right there. Then over here we have our next uh, our two-thirds guide and you can see that I have her eye positioned right here at the intersection and right on this guide. Then we have some word art which goes along this horizontal rule of thirds and we have our embellishments right along the side. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now what we've also done here is we blended this photo into the background. We have recolored her hat and then we just use a couple of papers and some digital scrapbook clusters to create this beautiful grouping. Now another way you can turn your guides off is if you go to view and then clear guides and remember that that's going to delete them. So if you still want to use them, you just check, you just turn off the check mark and that will hide them. If you want to delete them and you want to delete them all, you can just do clear guides. But if you just want to delete one or two, you would just drag the guide off of the document like I showed you before. Now for this layout, I am using my Cherry Crushed Denim collection, which is one of my favorites because it's useful for so many things. It's good for boys, girls, um, 4th of July, you know, it's good for every day because basically it's just denim and red. And we are also using my Cherry Crushed Denim clusters. And that makes scrapbooking a breeze. Like, if I don't have a lot of time to scrap, I will grab some clusters in a second. Okay, so let's get started. I'm excited to do this one. Okay, to begin, we're going to need a new document. We'll go to File, New, Blank File. And then we're going to create the preset called Scrapbooking. And that's 12 inches by 12 inches, 300 pixels per inch. And the background is set to white, but I'm going to set it to transparent. Then we'll come up here and do our guides. You remember what I said? You just go to view, new guide, vertical at 33% and click OK. View, new guide, vertical at 66.67% and then we'll do the same thing for our horizontal and one more time at 66.67%
And the very first thing we're going to do is drag in our background. And I've chosen a beautiful blue denim paper. And next we'll grab this paper and drag that in as well. Then we will grab our rectangular marquee tool and slice off a portion of that. And I think that's about right. And then we have to come over here and simplify that layer because it was placed as a smart object and before we can edit anything it needs to be rendered into a raster. And with that done, right click, layer via copy or layer via cut. If it's a large object, I usually do layer via copy because sometimes it's very um, intensive on your processor to do layer via cut. It takes kind of a long time. Then what I'll do is come over here and click on this little eye to turn off our layers visibility. Now we'll come over here to effects and we want to go to strokes and I'm going to click this stroke right here, the pink one, and drag it right onto there. And then I'll come up here to my effects and we're going to change the size to about, that looks good there, 24. And we're going to change this color to white. And then say, okay, I did add a drop shadow, so I'll go ahead and do that too. Now, when you're adding a shadow on to an item with a stroke on it, sometimes the shadow doesn't show up as well. So what you may want to do is I'm going to say OK to that. Then I'll go back to my layers panel and I'll click this little icon here to add a new layer and hold down my control key, command key on a Mac. And then I'll right click and merge those layers. Now I have the stroke applied and I can go in and add a drop shadow and it's going to show up a little bit better. So I'll change this from strokes to drop shadows of course. And we just want a really simple drop shadow so I'm going to go with that one. I'll just drag it over and there's that pesky little error message that the size may not be appropriate but you know you can always go in and change it if it isn't. Okay so I've set my light angle to 180 uh, my size is at 29, distance of 20, and my opacity is set to 91. I like that, so you know what, I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. So I'm going to say OK. And the next thing we want to do is come down here to Graphics, and we're going to add a photo frame, and I've chosen the basic white, at 20 pixels and I will just drag it over here and then I'm going to use my transform tool to size it to my liking so I'm just going to drag it down a little bit and drag it up a little bit and I'm going to use my rule of thirds to make sure that the main focal points are right here in the center and that I have even spacing on the top and the bottom and I'm just eyeballing it and then I will move this over so that it's positioned in the center and that looks great so I can do my little check here or just double click to apply that effect Perfect. Now we'll go back over here to our photo bin and grab the photo of this adorable little girl. She is just so cute. And I'm going to zoom up a little bit. Not that much. About like that. To make sure I like my positioning, I'm going to move her around a little bit. And then, um, hmm. I think that looks good. So we'll just click to apply that. 
And now what we're going to do, because you see her hat is green and we want it to match in with the rest of the layout. So I'm going to come over here to my layer panel and click on that layer. And then we're going to come over here and add an adjustment. So we'll go over to this little palette and we're adding a hue saturation adjustment. Okay. And you see this little check here. It says use the previous layer to create a clipping mask and that's what we're going to do otherwise it's going to apply this effect to the entire image and not just the photo but everything below it as well so we'll say yes and then click OK and you'll see what it's done it's come over here and it's made a layer mask and we are going to be working on that layer mask but the first thing we need to do is control I or command I on a Mac and you see now that instead of white it's black and we are going to grab a soft white brush grab our paintbrush here and we're going to change our color to white and that sizes looks about right but that softness is just too much we're going to go to about this right here and we're going to begin painting. I'm going to zoom up so you can see. Hit the space bar to move my document around a little bit. And I'm going to just paint in here a little bit, even though you can't see anything because I haven't actually done anything. And then I'm going to come over here to my hue saturation. And we're going to be working on when something is green, we know that that's comprised of blue and yellow, but they have green here and they have yellow here. But a lot of times um, when you're working on the green, you don't see many changes. So if I move this in here, you see it's beginning to turn red and I have an idea of where I want to paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint all that in and I'm going to try to do it rather quickly. But it's not really changing much. So... I'm going to go in here and do my yellows. And that seems to be the ticket. Okay, we're going to stop there. And then I'm just going to paint this out using my white brush and be very careful around your edges and this doesn't take long to do at all because this is actually a pretty small image or a pretty small area and if you go out of the lines don't worry because all you need to do is change that color to black and paint, ooh, that's way too small, and go around that area and just erase it out. And one little trick that you can remember is white reveals and black conceals. So that's how you remember which color to use. Okay, now I'm gonna change my brush back to white. And it looks like I got the hat pretty good. Maybe I could do a little bit right there. And now I'm going to come back over to my hue saturation and tweak these colors a little bit. So I'll go back down to the greens and see what can be done about that. Not too much. So now I'm actually going to go to reds and I'm going to make this a little bit redder. I'm going to boost the saturation. Actually, that's not helping me out. So I'll go back to the greens and do the same thing, boost up the saturation a little bit. And I'm actually going to zoom out because I want to try and match that red as close as possible. Okay, that looks really good right there. And then I'm going to bring this lightness down a little bit so that it's just a wee bit darker. And I am happy with that. 
So we will move on to the next step. And anytime these guides are in your way, just say, hey, you know what? Hide. Go away. Okay. And now, let's see. What should we do next? Next, we are going to bring in our next photo. So we'll go over here to the clip bin. Now I want this next photo to be beneath this layer here. So I'll come and click right there. So when I drag my new photo in, it should be right above that layer. And there she is. So I'll grab my move tool. and position her over here and I will turn my guides on just to make sure I get that positioning correct and that looks good now here comes the fun part we are going to blend this image into the background so I'll turn off my guides and I'm going to come over here and grab a great big eraser brush a very soft one Let's see what we have. We'll grab this one here. This is 300, but we're going to bump it up even more. And you see, I got that error because I forgot to simplify this layer. So yes, I do want to simplify this layer because I need to proceed. And then by doing that, it just go, goes right ahead and does it for you. Stay away from the area that you don't want to be deleted. So what I'm doing is I'm brushing as pretty far away because this brush has a very high feather ratio. And I'm going to come in later with a smaller brush to get some of these areas. So this is just going to help it blend in really nicely. There are a couple ways you can do blending, but right now the eraser tool really suits my needs. So that's what I'm going to go with. And now I'm going to size this down. Maybe not that small because, you know, the smaller you are, you're going to be more tempted to get close to the image. And we want to stay away from the image. Um, well, that depends, I guess, on how much you want to save and how much you want to erase or how much you want to blend it into the page. And that's a pretty good blend. Like, um, you know, I think that looks pretty decent. So now we're going to go ahead and change our blending mode. So if I click here and I click this on normal, I can just hit the down arrow on my keyboard and it's going to start blending in and showing you all these different effects that you can do. And you can just play with these until you see the one that you like the best. You can see there's all types of effects that you can go for. But in this case, I actually decided to stop at hard light. And that's a pretty good blend, right? But I'm going to lower the opacity a bit to about 80%, and that blends in really nicely. And next, I'm going to go in and add another adjustment layer, but this time... I'm going to add a brightness and contrast. And then I just bump my brightness up a little bit until I'm happy with it. And then, because I actually don't want to apply this to the paper below it, I'm going to right-click and create a clipping mask so that that effect, you see the difference that it made? Now the paper is darker and she's just blending in, but she's also shining brightly. And if you remember the last time, it might, it will ask you if you want to do that, but I forgot to do it. So... Let me hit the space bar and move my image down so that I can see what I'm doing. That looks absolutely perfect. And now all we need to do is add some embellishments to make it look super cute. And we're going to do that really quickly using our clusters. So what I did is 
click on this layer here because we want to bring the clusters in right on top of that layer. I'm going to grab my move tool and go back to our photo bin. And then I'm going to drag this cluster in here and I'm going to move it. Actually, I need it to be above here. And I'm going to position it until it looks good to me. And I like that, so I'll leave that there. And I'm going to go over here, right click, duplicate this layer. And then I'm going to drag it down here this time. And I'll zoom out so I can see what that looks like. And finally, we'll drag this one in. You see how easy it is to use clusters? I use them all the time because I have to admit, I'm pretty much a lazy scrapper. <laughs> ah, sometimes it's just, I don't know, sometimes I just don't have the mojo or whatever it is that it takes to make the page come together. And clusters always help me out with that. And then I'll just resize this. and double click or click the little green arrow to apply. And our layout, as you can see, is almost done. And that came together in absolutely no time. And finally, what we're going to do is add some text. So I'll turn on my guides again, and then we'll just click on guides so that they show. And next, what we're going to do is add some text. So I come up here and I click on my topmost layer and grab my type tool. The font I'm using is Sleepless Plus. And I'll just click here because we want our text to be right along this lower horizontal line. And I type. Now you see how it's moving over. I, that's because I have my font set to center. I usually, if I want it to go, you know, right to left, I change it to this here. And then I'm going to type it over again because I want you to see. And then I'll just move it over here a little bit because I want the A to start at the frame. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn, oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. I spelled it wrong because I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, that looks right. And then what we want to do is click on the layer below that because we're going to create our new layer right there and come up here to this little icon, click it. We'll grab our rectangular marquee tool and I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. You can see I have my text here and it's white against her white scarf and you really can't see it too well. And I don't want to change the color of the text because I like this subtle effect but I do want to be able to see it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is create a little grid here or line or I don't know what you want to call it, but you see what I'm doing. I'm creating this little rectangle. Yeah, we'll call it that. And we're going to flood fill it with white. Oh, you're saying, what are you doing? Now I can't see it at all, <laughs> but just wait. We're going to lower the opacity. and then Control D or Command D on a Mac to deselect that. And we actually have to bring that below this photo so that it doesn't overlap that border. And then we'll come down here to Effects and we're going to add a stroke. And we're going to add this blue stroke right there. And we'll just drag that over. 
Oops. <laughs> that actually looks kind of cute. I did not mean to add it to the text. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over here to the style and see if I might want to keep that. And so what we'll do is come over here and we'll click on this effect, double click on it. And let me see what happens if I lower the opacity. Not bad, not bad. But I'll keep it really low because, I, like I said, I want to keep the text really subtle. So I'll say OK. And then this time with my actual little horizontal line here checked, I'm going to go back over to Effects and drag that over. And that is done. And then I'll turn off my guides. You can even delete them at this, at this point if you want to. And see how I like that. It looks really good. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double click here on these effects. Because I want to have a dark blue color. I don't want that bright blue. And then I'll just come in here and... I can actually grab my color tool and grab one of these blues here from the photo. And I like that, so I'll say OK. And then click OK to apply it. And I'll zoom out so I can see what my layout looks like. Oh my gosh, it looks absolutely adorable. But one more thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to come here, click on this layer, and I am going to simplify it because there's just a little bit too much texture in her face for me. So what I'm going to do is grab my lasso tool, and I'm going to set a feather of about 20 pixels. I'm just going to drag around her face. And then I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And make sure you have Preview turned on. And then I did want to zoom up a little bit, but you can't do that while this window's open. And then just play with the blur a little bit until her face. Now I want to keep some of the texture. Now see, if I do that too much, it looks good on her face, but it doesn't look like it's actually blended in. So I'm just going to blend it just a little bit. And we'll zoom up and make sure that looks pretty good. And it does. I'm really happy with that. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have joined my Facebook group, and I'll leave a link to that below, and you tried this layout, I'd love to see what you did. You can use this collection or any collection that you want. Um, to make your layout look spectacular. If you do, show it to me. I'd love to see it. I'm Veronica. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so that you can get more.